myth and history lovers. This is Mr. P of Mr. P's Mythopedia, and I have a little question to ask you here. Ever hear the phrase, what goes around comes around? Everyone has at one point. It refers to the idea that whatever you do and however you do it in life, it'll come back around later to visit you in the same way. Act like a total jerk to others, and that same vibe will come back to you. And bad and fairly uncomfortable things will happen. Act kind and do your best to treat others well, and the same thing will happen to you. Kind of like the Hindu idea of karma. Well, the ancient Greeks had a similar idea, but in my humble opinion, it was a lot more complex than karma. They held similar beliefs, but it took it to a whole nother level when it came to punishments and rewards for their actions. And it all focused on their mythology, which was used to explain and enforce the behaviors of their civilization. See, the Greeks believed in something called hubris, which is a negative word that describes an individual's personality. A person with hubris has extreme or foolish pride or dangerous overconfidence. Being too full of yourself to the point where it's over the top. Arrogant. Smarmy. Thinking that you're way better than everyone else. Someone in ancient Greece who held themselves in such high esteem, often at the expense of others around them, were said to have hubris. And acting in such a way had a really, really bad consequence for you as a person. Having hubris meant that you thought yourself better than the gods, and that was a huge no-no. And of course, in thinking you were better than the gods, you'd attract the negative attention of the gods, something that nobody wanted. The Olympians weren't going to put up with that kind of baloney from mere mortals and weakling humans. Sinning was okay for the gods, but don't let them catch you doing it, especially where it might inconvenience them somehow. So what would happen? Well, if you were one of those people who was just oozing hubris, according to the Greeks, the gods would send their enforcer, the cop of the Olympians, a goddess that you did not want to deal with in any way, shape, or form. They'd dispatch Nemesis, the goddess of divine vengeance, and it was her job to show up and knock you down a few pegs in life. She'd set you straight and teach you a lesson in how to behave in the eyes of the gods, and there was no escaping your punishment. The Greeks had another name for Nemesis, Adrastia, or the Inescapable. That sounds pretty final in the Vengeance and Punishment Department. And how bad would your punishment be? Well, that all depended on the level of hubris you were putting out. The ancient Greeks had another idea tied to hubris. They believed that no one person should have too much good luck or fortune in life. Things should be balanced, with a normal person getting just the right amount of both types of luck. Hubris was a sign that things were going way too well for you, and so something had to be done to put you back into balance. Nemesis was a dispenser of bad luck, and she would lay it on thick to those who had a very long run of good fortune. Luckily, on the flip side of that, Nemesis had a twin sister named Tyche, whose main mission in life was the exact opposite. If someone's life was going too horribly, no matter how many good deeds they did, and no matter how well they behaved, Tyche arrived full of brilliant shining cheer to bestow some good luck and fortune on you to balance out the bad vibes. Now, let's say you went really overboard on your sinning and started talking smack about, or even worse, to your parents and elders. Or if you were a guest in someone's house and you impolitely treated your host like dirt. Or if you were a town leader that treated the townspeople like servants. If those kinds of horrible crimes were committed, Nemesis pulled out the big guns and sent her sisters, the Aranes, out on the trail to hunt you down stalk you mercilessly, and hound you endlessly until you either went insane and killed yourself, or died from the exertion of the chase. Yep, the Greeks were certainly all about their kids respecting their parents, and with serious consequences if you didn't. You could run, but there was nowhere to hide from the Aranes, better known to many as the Furies. The three Furies, whose names say it all, Electo, meaning endless, Megara, meaning jealous rage, and Tisiphone, meaning, meaning vengeful destruction, were seen as a good way to punish those who thought their stuff didn't stink, or who thought they could do whatever they wanted, to whoever they wanted to, whenever they wanted to. Well, nope. You pull that kind of ridiculous and rude behavior, and the Aranese, who were sometimes seen as old, ugly ladies with snakes for hair, or maybe dogs' heads, coal black bodies, bat wings, and bloodshot eyes, would descend down on you, torment you, and whip you with brass-studded whips. Just the threat of the Aranese was enough to teach children good manners and to make sure people behaved most of the time. Of course, sometimes Nemesis and the Aranese were not enough. Sometimes a crime of hubris was so much that Zeus, the king of the gods himself, would have to step in. 
If that happened, you can imagine that the punishment would be beyond the worst thing you'd ever heard of. Zeus would ship you down to Tartarus, the supermax prison of hellfire and terror that was 10,000 miles beneath the actual underworld, to be tortured in some insane and creative way of Zeus's choosing. The examples were many, but one stands out as pretty telling of Zeus's temper. Long story short, there was a mortal king named Ixion, who had been invited to a banquet on Mount Olympus, which was, you know, a pretty big honor, only to try hitting on Zeus's wife, the queen of Olympus, Hera. Hera complained to her husband, which is hilarious if you know of Zeus's usual shenanigans of cheating on his wife, and the big guy tossed Ixion down into the fiery pits of Tartarus with a rather horrid punishment in mind. Ixion was stripped naked, tied to a fiery wheel by his hands and feet using venomous snakes, and then cursed to spin around Tartarus for all eternity, on fire. Yep, that's what you get for messing around with the wife of a god, and not just any god, but the king of the gods. Other folks who felt the sting of Zeus's hubris detection were Tantalus and Sisyphus, both of which had nasty eternities planned out for their ticking off of the king of gods. Tantalus was forced to starve for all time while there was drink and food just out of his reach, and Sisyphus was forced to push a huge boulder up a steep hill all day long, just to have the boulder roll back down to the bottom as he got to the top, over and over and over. Zeus had no end to the creativity of his punishments. In the end, the lesson of hubris is this, behave yourself. That applies now just as much as it ever did back then. If you strive to do the right thing and work hard at being a decent person, usually things go all right. If you check yourself before you do something you know is going to screw both yourself and possibly someone else up, 99% of the time, life will be that much easier to live. Will it ever be perfect? Heck no. But at least you don't wind up cruising around Tartarus on a flaming wheel while snakes bite you forever. The Greeks understood hubris just like we do, even if they had to come up with some fantastic stories to explain why you shouldn't act like that. Hubris is still a thing to avoid falling into in modern day because nobody likes someone who thinks they're better than everyone else. Definitely something to think about from both a mythological standpoint as well as from a modern one. If you're an educator listening to this, feel free to use the links to Nemesis, Tyche, and Aranyes from the Mythopedia for your classes, all listed below in the video description. And if you really dig mythology, legends, and other supernatural weirdness, feel free to subscribe to this channel for more, or come visit my other project, Mr. P's Mythopedia, provided below. Hope you enjoyed the discussion, thanks for the viewership and support, and we'll see you again real soon with another wild adventure in ancient legendary awesomeness.